While the Cold War was flaming up in the 1950s, two of the most famous Russian helicopter design bureaus, Mil and Karmov, were instructed by the Soviet government to create a new heavy lift helicopter. One that was not able to carry just heavy but also bulky cargo like ballistic missiles in their launch platforms, but able to over long distances. Mill came up with a somewhat traditional design while Karmov had other ideas entirely. It would be an aircraft that would be far more complex and risky, but could possibly surpass requirements set by the government and make a name for the Bureau for generations to come. And boy, did they have huge plans for what would come after. This is the story of the potentially great aircraft that came at a great cost. The unconventional super helicopter, the Karmov Ka-22. By 1953, the USSR had started the development of a new type of heavy lift helicopters. Helicopters had proved their worth throughout the early beginnings of the Cold War. The Soviet Union was investing heavily into helicopters as the vehicles were highly useful throughout its vast wilderness across its continent spanning country. Both Mill and Karmov were selected to come up with designs and the race was on to develop what would be at the time the world's largest helicopter. Its requirements would be simple, big, fast and powerful. Mill had success with already in production designs such as the Mi-4, while Karmov was struggling to make a name for themselves in the Soviet military circles. The Car 25 in their coaxial rotor design would become their springboard to success, but at the time they thought the big break would be with the new heavy lift helicopter program, so they went all in. But these Soviet engineers wouldn't have had to go to such insane lengths to build the world's largest helicopter if they had just had Magellan TV. Today's video sponsor. Magellan TV is a documentary streaming service founded by filmmakers and has the richest and most varied science content available anywhere, covering space, physics, technology, health, nature, and science history. I personally recommend the documentary Faster Than Light, a look at creating the first spaceship to actually visit another star. It's not all science fiction with some actual cutting edge tech built into it. With 15 to 20 hours of content added a week, including 4K HD docos, no ads and available on all devices, Magellan TV is what you've been missing. They even have given all found and explained viewers one month free with a link in the description. So go check that out after this video. Back to the race to build the biggest Soviet helicopter. Karmov would base its design initially on the Bratuhin B-11. They figured that if the twin rotor helicopter was larger, then you could fit two horizontal propellers under the wings and ta-da, a monster helicopter to inspire fear in the West. Here's how it would have worked. The Car 22 would have two large engines fixed on each wing tip. These engines would power both four bladed propeller and a four bladed main rotor, operating them for either vertical or horizontal flight. Not at the same time, however. During vertical flight, the horizontal propeller would be disconnected, only coming online when the aircraft switched to forward flight. But these rotors were allowed to spin naturally, but without power. These engines on the wingtips would be badass, having up to 5,900 horsepower. The blades themselves would be able to push the aircraft up to a planned 400 kilometers per hour, although during tests it only achieved a still impressive 356 kilometers per hour. 
The four crew cockpit would sit above the nose of the aircraft with seating for a further 80 soldiers in the rear. If not men, the Car 22 would be able to carry 16.5 tons of bulky cargo with the nose of the aircraft swinging open at airfields for quick loading and unloading. Construction started off using the Li-2 fuselage as a base, but the engineers ended up scrapping it for a costly new airframe, delaying the program somewhat. In 1959, the first prototype rolled out of the workshop, fired up its engines, and took to the sky, its raw heralding in a new age of Russian helicopter. Also, the brilliant minds at Karmov thought, in reality, the project was doomed as soon as the rotors began to spin. In 1961, the test pilot of the first flight, Dmitry Yefremov, would go on to break the world record for gyrodyne speed and set it at 356 kilometers per hour. Among that one, several other world records have been broken with the same aircraft, some of which stand to this day. The one record that they didn't break, however, was beating Mill to the punch with a first flight. Their rival, who you may remember was also going for that same lucrative heavy lift helicopter project, had already flown their aircraft in 1957. But this would only be a footnote in history compared to what happened a year later. In 1962, while testing one of the four prototypes, the aircraft rolled to the left and crashed killing all on board, including our hero, Dimitri. The flaw was discovered in the starboard rotor collective pitch control linkage, and further inspection found that two of the other three Car 22s suffered from similar problems. A complicated autopilot feature had to be built just to correct this issue for the rest of the aircraft. Testing continued, but in 1964, a second prototype crashed. It had entered an uncontrolled turn to the right and into an unrecoverable dive, killing two more test pilots. Because of these two crashes and the fact that the aircraft was super complex to build and hard to fly, the government decided to pull the plug and the Mi-6 went on in history to become one of the popular heavy helis of the Soviet Air Force. But this idea of a super heavy helicopter that had aircraft engines couldn't easily be shaken. Karmov had one more design that would be faster, bigger, and even more powerful than the Car 22. In 1967, the Karmov Design Bureau decided to have another crack with a project simply called the Karmov Car 35D. This version would be huge and was designed to work in tandem with the impressive AN-12. A big difference between the Car 22 and this monster was its twin turbojet engines. This would increase its speed up to 550 km per hour and its lifting capacity to over 20 tons. These engines would give it a range of around 800 kilometers, which would make it perfect for deploying troops, up to a hundred of them, to remote locations from air bases. Models at the time even feature the aircraft taking on board SAMs or other lightly armored tanks, so you know they meant business. For military use, they included a remote cannon on the nose, turning this into a literal gunship. Likely, had it gone ahead, there would have been a possibility for a more kitted out version with even more armaments. However, this project never saw the light of day, with the concept once again going to the Mi V12, which a prototype was made and also broke several records in the helicopter world, but ended up in a museum. The insignia number 35 would be reused by Karmov for a different type of rotor craft, with the latest development of the famous KA-31 helicopter bearing that 35 number as a variant. 
After many years of producing helicopters for both the Russian Navy and the Air Force with its amazing Car 52 Alligator, the Bureau would return in 2019 with a project directed towards the civilian market and a long-time wish for a successful aeroplane helicopter hybrid concept called the Car 92. Along with the twin coaxial rotors in line with traditional car mob thinking, it would also have twin pusher propellers on the rear, just like the initial second design of the Car 35. Slated for prototype development in 2018 and production to launch in 2022, the lack of any progress can only be blamed on the Russian market downturn of 2015, which saw many ambitious aviation projects hit roadblocks. A roadblock that seems to have hit every type of civil helicopter slash plane aircraft from the British fairly rotodyne in the 1950s to the Car 35 and our very own humble Car 22. The Car 22 occupies an unusual junction in the world of aviation. Not quite a plane, not quite a helicopter, and not quite the revolutionary aircraft that would change the way we fly. But it still holds a very special place in our hearts and we are happy that Karmov continue to pursue their wild and unusual designs into the future. Speaking of the future, if you want to see future episodes of Found and Explained before anybody else, then why don't you become a Patreon or a channel member? That's right, that little join button down below. You can jump on there, see videos early, speak with me direct, and even come up with ideas that we'll cover next. So I'll leave a link in the description and you can check it out. Thanks again so much for watching.